So we will we'll discuss more about inferential statistics when we talk about the sampling distributions and also the hypothesis testing. So now we're focusing on the descriptive statistics on how to explore data. So for descriptive statistics, we use the describe data set. So to describe a data set, before that we need to explore the data set. And after we explore the data set, we need to have a way to describe the data set. So when we communicate the conclusion or information about the data set, we can just use a description. Okay. So for example, so this is a height measurement for 10 students. And the first thing, of course, we want to explore the data set. Okay. Or we want to describe the data sets. So in this case, so I can see that there are two students with the height 163, two students with the height 164, two students with the height 165, and so on and so forth. Okay. So this is one way you can describe it and explore the data set. So if your data set is quite small and there is not very variation, still possible to describe in this way. So in this case, when we communicate with others about this data set, we can just describe it in words. And we don't really need to show the all the number. However, if you have a data set which the variation is very large, and we have a very, very large data set, just imagine this is a 10,000 student data. So there's no way we can describe the data set in words. So that's the reason why we need to have a way to explore the data set. So one of the way is to summarize the data, just like what you learned in the last lectures. So the best way to explore the data set is to use the histogram, which can be used to show the distribution of data. So the histogram actually is, is a frequency distribution. So it shows the frequency distribution for different data. So the way how to make a histogram is first you need to order all the data and then set the bin size. Okay, we have a list of the, all this data. The next thing we need to do after we have ordered the data, so from the smallest to largest, then we can set the bin size. Okay, so these are the bin size. So this is a range. So for example, for the first bin, it consists of the data or the observation, the value between 160 to 161.9. Okay, the second bin consists of the value of 162.0 to 163.9. Okay, and so on and so forth. So the number of the bins is depend on the bin size and also the the maximum and maximum value of your data set. Then the next thing is to calculate the frequency or density of the of the data for each of the bin. Okay. So here I have 100,000 data or observations. So I have to calculate the frequency. Okay. How many of this data fall inside the bin 160 to 161.9? Okay. So we can just count the frequency. And also we can calculate the density. So to calculate density is quite simple. So first, what we need to do, we have to have our frequency 113 divided by the total number of the observation. And then after that, we will get our proportions. After we have this, then we can divide this value with the size of the bin. So the size of the bin is 2 cm. Okay, it's 2 cm. So we just divide this value with 2, then we will get 0.000565. So when we round it up, we will get the density. So you can calculate the density for each of these bin. Then the next thing is to plot the data as a bar chart. Okay, this is, this is how it looks like. So we just have our bin, so 160 to 162. When you plot the number, so the number is 113, so we just plot here. And 162 to 164, which is this one. Okay. So the frequency is 15594, so we just plot 15594. Okay, and so on and so forth. So this is how we can generate a bar chart. Okay. And in this case, the S axis is a bin. Okay. 
and also the y axis is the frequency. Okay. As we have also calculate the density, so we can generate the histogram, but the same histogram, but the y axis is the value of the density. So you can see the shape of the histogram is the same. So just imagine now um, I make another histogram, but this time I change the bin size. So in this case, I made the bin a little bit smaller. So the difference between the size of each bin is just 1 cm. So the difference between each bin is just 1 cm. So in this case, I can recalculate the frequency for each of the bins. And at the same time, I also can calculate the density. So you can plot the chart. So the chart will look something different. Okay. So this chart will provide you more information as we have a smaller bin. So as we just discussed just now, so we can have a histogram that show the frequency or density. Okay. So we can just compare them. So this is a histogram that with 100,000 observations. Okay. So this is a frequency and this is a density. Okay. So just imagine that we have uh, 1,000 observations only for the populations. Okay, this is how it looks like. So as you can see, uh, if we plot, use the histogram and plot it as a frequency, and we want to compare the different uh, populations or different data set, okay, it's very hard for us to, to, to know if the distribution of the data is similar between these two data set, okay, or how much they are different if you use the frequency. The reason is that the axis is different, the magnitude is different. So if you change the scale, okay, so we just enlarge this, okay. So you can see actually the, the distribution of the data is more or less the same, okay. But if you want to compare them and then use the same scale, you make the comparison not very meaningful. Wow. So that's the reason why the density scale, so for example, this is also the histogram for 1000 observations. So if you use the okay, density as a y axis, so we can compare them, okay, easier way, regardless the size of the data set. So that's the reason why the density has been used more frequently, okay, for us to compare the, the distribution of different data set. So the density also uh, same as a probability, so we can calculate the probability. So the popularity is calculated based on the area under the bar. So it's a frequency distribution. So this is a probability. So just imagine that now you have one histogram which uh, the same data sets, let's say the 100,000 observations of the body height. So we can use a different size of bin and produce a slightly different histogram from the same data set. So as you can see, if we reduce the bin size, we will have more accurate estimate. So for example, if you have a really uh, large bin size, then you can calculate the probability for a certain uh, for the value that fall in the in this bin. Okay. If you have a smaller bin, then we can have a more accurate uh, estimate for the probability. So we can just calculate the probability of the of this value and this value, for example. Okay. So if you have large data set, then we can have a very fine histogram that sort of very high resolution. So at the end, it's possible that you have uh, 0.1 cm as a single bin. Okay, the difference between the size of each bin is 0.1 cm. So it's allow us to estimate the probability for the certain uh, observations, not only for the observation in the range of the measurement, according to the bin size okay so you can imagine that um, if you have a infinite population very very large population and you take a measurement from the expand unit you will be able to have a probability distribution curve okay and the area under curve is a probability okay so from now on you will see this uh, quite often okay so when you see this, you should remember this is not something is so different. Actually, this is a 
histogram. Okay, it's a way how we explore the data. At the same time, we also learn about the box plot. So there's a way to summarize the, the, the distributions. Okay, in a box plot. So the box plot is a is a simple form. Okay, it's a little bit simple form compared to the histogram to describe the data. Because from the box plot, we can know the the median, the first quartile, minimum, maximum value, in and also outlier if there are any outliers. Okay, so we know that there are twenty five percent of the data is between one six four point two to one six five. Okay, so that's the reason why when we want to do the steady state, usually we use the box plot. Okay. To this, to explore our data, to show the distribution of our data in our in the data set, and also use it for the comparison between different samples. So for each sample, we will generate one box plot, then we put them together side by side. In the, on the same plot, same y-axis scale, then we can compare them in a meaningful manner. 